So one of them is a very easy wire loyalty program, but I don't have to tell you about wire loyalty program, even if the, pr the previous presentation was very interesting because loyalty is not only a question of customer engagement, it's mainly a question of uh, raising uh, the spending of the customer. You have two points of view. Our point of view is the point of view of the, of the banking business unit, which is the issuer, which is the same point of view of the retailer, because at the end of the day, if we force the customer to use the card, we are forcing the customer to go into the shop. Is a loyalty program really impacting on churn rate? I would like to, to raise the question to the audience. Can you raise the, the, your hands? Who of the audience is believing that a loyalty program can increase, can reduce the churn rate by 30%? Ah, okay, very small percentage. I will show a couple of numbers which are very, very nice. So you are, you are very prudent, or you, but I will show you later. Uh, are loyalty performances relevant from a merchant perspective? Because here the game is quite easy. My, my point of view is, is, as a bank is to increase the spending. But if I don't increase the market share of the retailer, I will lose the game. Cashback versus points. Do you know what cashback means? Because I mean, sometimes uh, it's used is used for a lot, but not everybody is intending the same meaning of cashback. Cashback means that I'm giving to the customer real cash, hard cash, and crediting the cash into their cards. How many of you, please raise your hands, are using a cashback program? Okay, not many, I would say. Uh, this is a cashback program. Uh, merchant funded versus issuer funded. This is the other big question. Make or buy. That's important, especially for a big elephant like a postal organization. If, if I wouldn't be able to outsource, I couldn't be able to do this, this program. Uh, I mean, Post Italiane, as I will show later on, is a postal organization. It's a very unique postal organization, I should say. We are making this last year 1 billion euro profits. So, to be honest, it's not a common case in the postal world. Um, but to be honest, that Ten years ago, this company was losing uh, hundreds of millions of euros. And once he started, they started to, to build up the banking business unit, the insurance business unit, we became uh, the second bank in Italy and the first insurance in Italy. And now two-thirds of the revenues are coming from these new businesses. That's the reason behind uh, making one billion euro profits. Basic data versus big data, this is part of the discussion and I will show you later on. A couple of, a couple of numbers about the banking business unit. Franco Postal is, is a business unit within the postal organization. As you can see, we have more than 26 million customers and the, uh, the most interesting part is the number of cards that we have. We have 60 million card holders, 6 million are debit cards, which is, which is representing more or less 17% market share. Then we have 10 million prepaid card. The prepaid card is a new business for the bank, somehow. In 2003, when the postal organization Banco Posta started this business, uh, no banks be believed that the prepaid business could be a reasonable business. Now in Italy, you have more than 52 issuers. So prepaid card is really becoming, especially in a country where you have uh, problems in giving credits to the people, could be a very interesting approach. Um, and, and then we have no, not so many credit cards, uh, and we only distribute credit cards because we cannot issue credit cards. We are a bank, but we, not, we cannot give credits, which during this time, it's a nice position, I would say. So we don't have any particular position in terms of debts. Um, and then in the online banking, we have more than 1.4 million customers. So the asset is the number of card holders, high penetration of debit card. So it's not a credit card business, and it's very important for the program. It's mainly debit card and prepaid. 
an established brand because I would say the trust that the people had toward the postal organization in Italy is very high. Uh, the other big point is the distribution network. We have more than 14,000 outlets, which means that uh, if we do not consider churches and the police, we have a very widespread network. Okay? Um, so it's every, everywhere, um, and this is one of the strengths of being a postal organization. Issues. So, the first issue is that the, the usage is low of the cars, and this is the big issues that we have. Churn rate is high, because the banking business is very high. We have more than 800 banks, and it is very distributed. We have 15% market share, and we are the second bank. Okay? And then the, uh, the limited interaction with merchant. We have not a relevant position as, a, as an acquirer, so, which means that the type of solution that we have is independent from the acquiring business. Okay? So, these are the reasoning behind uh, launching the loyalty program for us. Yeah. So, uh, as Paolo was saying, it was uh, quite challenging for, uh, for Banco Posta uh, to start even thinking of, of the loyalty program, considering uh, their, their positioning within uh, um, within the banking, uh, within the banking market, basically with a limited presence in acquiring. So when we started working, uh, working together with uh, with Banco Posta as Mastercard advisors, we tried I mean, to to map the, the loyalty scenario in Europe to understand uh, um, the main competitors and the main players in the in the loyalty arena and where um, Banco Posta could position within these. Uh, um, within this uh, competitive scenario. So, uh, we try to, uh, to segment uh, um, loyalty programs within two, uh, key, um, two key axes. One is uh, funding, so uh, we have uh, merchant funded programs, we have issuer funded programs, and we have uh, co-financed programs, and the type of rewards. So we have pure points-based programs, we have some kind of points and catalogs programs, and hard cash um, programs uh, giving a real cash to, to card holders. And uh, within these, uh, these metrics, uh, we uh, managed to identify uh, basically three buckets. So we've got a first bucket, that is uh, um, uh, the one uh, where we can find what we call the CRM-based programs. Mainly, uh, we have uh, coalition programs, uh, uh, merchant-funded, uh, offering points to um, to cardholders, and here we have uh, uh, very important marketing operators like Nectar, that is a UK company, or Payback in Germany, or Smiles, that basically uh, created a merchant coalition and used their data, um, data power, and their uh, huge, uh, massive uh, um, data to attract new merchants within the coalition. Um, then we've got the second bucket that is um, quite interesting and it's what we call the MX land. Uh, as I mean, we discussed in the previous presentation, from an issuer perspective, it's becoming uh, more and more difficult I mean, to, um, to finance uh, programs, basically because the interchange rate related to cards is going, is going down and the expectation are that the interchange rate is uh, going down uh, even more in the following years. So basically this is what we call Annex Land just because Annex has a quite mm, peculiar positioning within the credit card market. They have a quite affluent uh, product that allow them to, uh, <coughs> to offer uh, a membership rewards that is their affluent program financed by themselves or they also have some uh, niche products like revolving cards offering a real cashback. But again, it's quite tough for an issuer to position a loyalty program in this. Um, and then there is uh, uh, maybe the most uh, important or the most profitable and interesting um, quadrant from an issuer perspective uh, that are programs um, like uh, Guarantee in Turkey or Barclay Cut Freedom in the UK. So issuers, big issuers, they are both issuers and acquirers, so they have a strong and solid relationship with, with merchants, allowing them to, um, to attract new merchants within the coalition. So now you could argue, okay, but what about Banco Posta? Well, 
uh, we decided uh, um, together with together with Paolo, together with uh, with the client, to enter in this uh, I mean most uh, the most rewarding and the most profitable quadrant, but also very challenging because, uh, as Paolo was saying before, Banco Posta has a limited presence in, in the acquiring. So this was the big challenge um, that we agreed together. Uh, so with this uh, um, objective in mind, we started uh, literally a journey together with uh, with Banco Posta. So we started uh, three years ago, uh, helping uh, the bank in designing uh, in designing the program, in uh, uh, analyzing the spending behavior of their cardholders, because we really. Uh, think that if you want to create a successful loyalty program, then you have to understand the, the customer base, you have to adapt uh, the program characteristics based on the, um, the cardholder's needs. Then, after three, four months of this first phase of program design and the business case setup, understanding if the program uh, would, would work also from a financial uh, perspective, we switched into execution. So we started uh, the implementation phase, um, trying to understand uh, what was the best engine, uh, the best platform to run a kind of uh, a kind of um, a loyalty program like this, uh, and also, I mean, uh, the effort in terms of people, in terms of marketing and communication that the bank uh, um, had to put in place to start up uh, a loyalty like this. And the second phase uh, uh, lasted around four or five months. So basically, after uh, six, seven months, uh, the bank was was ready to launch in a pilot phase the, the program, starting uh, to contractualize the first merchants, uh, like food operators and the fuel operators. And in one year time, the program went live, um, uh, reaching the entire 16 million customer base uh, uh, that Paolo was mentioning before. So this is how the concept, how the program works, uh, and what was our involvement uh, at the beginning in the designing and uh, uh, launching the program. So I can, I want to show you a brief video uh, explaining uh, I mean, how the program works. Uh, okay. So this is how the the program works. But I also want to to, uh, to guide you through uh, which are the key success factors that basically I mean brought this um, this huge success of the program. So uh, obviously, when we designed uh, uh, the program, um, we said that obviously the, the the brand has to be leveraged. Oste has a huge brand in Italy; is considered the safe haven. Uh, in Italy, so people really trust what Poste uh, what Poste does for them. Then the second element to leverage is obviously their customer base. Uh, they have more than 16 million card holders uh, split between debit, credit, and prepaid. So a huge, um, a huge number of card orders to, to leverage. And then we decided to basically complement these uh, these two assets coming from uh, from Poste Italiane with a solid engine behind the platform uh, and Banco Posta decided to partner with us with MasterCard to, um, to develop a platform, a platform together and adapt it to the Italian market. Then uh, data, it's important and you will see later on that uh, the program really uh, relies on, uh, on data usage and on uh, analysis of spending uh, behavior to really uh, target the one-to-one -one, uh, cardholders in uh, making acceleration campaigns. And uh, last but not least, the marketing and communication. Banco Boss is really committed uh, and uh, to spend a, a lot of money because I mean there is a return in terms of um, reduction of churn rate, in terms of uh, frequency of card usage, reactivation, and so on. So these are the three pillars around the loyalty program. Let's try to. <clears throat> Uh, to understand uh, one by one. So this is how the program works. Uh, you saw briefly in the video, but what's the message uh, behind the program is that this program is really easy. We think that uh, in order to be successful, uh, a loyalty program has to be uh, easy, both from a order perspective and from a merchant perspective. So, as you can see in this uh, in this diagram, uh, the, the card holder, in order to accumulate discount, just have to make a transaction. So there is no opt-in, there is no subscription fee, 
Uh, Cardolas are automatically enrolled into the program, and this is one of the uh, key success factors uh, that I mean, we understood is uh, a key differentiator versus other programs uh, in Italy and in Europe that are quite complex in terms of uh, um, subscription, uh, <coughs> and this is one of the reasons of their failure or they are not uh, so successful. And uh, <coughs> then there is a, you know, an engine behind it, uh, so as soon as the cardholder makes a transaction, our platform, our proprietary platform that is called the MasterCard Award System, just tracks this uh, transaction and uh, um, and uh, uh, calculates the, the total uh, cashback accumulated. And as soon as the cardholder reaches 10 euro, that is a threshold to get cashback, this cashback is automatically credited into the prepaid card or in the in the account. And then there is a, a quite complex analytics uh, uh, and, uh, and marketing activity in order to stimulate spending behavior um, to, to the industry and to the merchants that belongs to the, to the merchant coalition. So this is how it works and easiness is really one of the, of the key messages of, um, of, the, of the program. And uh, in terms of um, in terms of engine, we also consider key uh, the partnership that we um, we established with with Banco Posta. As you can see, the asset of Banco Posta in, uh, in this um, in this story are basically the customer base. We discussed about it, uh, their marketing capabilities, and the, the geolocation of their cardholders. But still, <clears throat> from our side, we brought the knowledge of cardholder spending. So we have a huge um, a huge um, knowledge of, uh, of transaction based coming from our peering system, complemented with uh, the, pla the, program it's the platform itself, uh, that is MasterCard system, as I told you, and uh, consulting support. This is important because, as Paolo was mentioning before, in the, <clears throat> in the, in the key questions, uh, Banco Posta has the power, potentially, to develop from scratch uh, a, lo um, a loyalty platform to create uh, a marketing department uh, entirely dedicated to loyalty, but still it's not there for business. So one of the key messages uh, is that uh, from an issuer perspective, it's better to focus on, uh, on the core business uh, and uh, outsource uh, what's not uh, in their DNA, like in this case, uh, uh, IT features and advanced uh, analytics and marketing skills. This is a chart which is showing what we are doing from the retailer perspective. How many of the audience here is part, is part of the retailer business? Okay. So I think that you can appreciate here this concept. I mean, generally speaking, the merchant has the depth of the knowledge in terms of what the cardholder is doing within his shop. What we know as an issuer is what the customer is doing in the different industries and quite enough what is doing in the different competitors. So which means that uh, the Banco Posta view is enriching uh, the view of the card holders and is giving to the merchant uh, a view which is the only view that is interested in what the customer is doing in the competitor. What, which is the spending, which is the wallet share which is the market share, can, how can we measure the switch from the previous attitudes and the attitude with the loyalty program. So, and that's what we are essentially doing with communication and the targeted and geolocated marketing initiative. So we address our customer spending the cars in the competitors and we move the attitude of the customer toward what is the uh, objective of the, of the merchant, of the partner. And I think this is the only thing that can be done. Either you partner with an issuer, and in this case with this type of solution, so which means that you can track all the transactions in the different industries and see how it moves, thanks to the loyalty program, or otherwise, I mean, with points, or with the, you know, also with the coalition programs, which are based on points, but which are not able to track what the customer is doing in the competitor, you can do this. And, and the merchant, what we ask to the merchants is funding uh, the, the discount. And, and that's how the deal. So we pay the communication, we do the profiling, we see what the customer is doing by the competitors, 
and the merchant is paying the discount. So, uh, this is just an example of uh, how we play with data. So, uh, it's an illustrative example, but just to give you an idea of the knowledge that we, that we have and that we built and developed together with the Banco Posta to analyze spending card holders. Uh, so, uh, right now we have a complex model based, uh, built and customized for, for Banco Posta to understand exactly the level of engagement and the level of stickiness uh, uh, to cardholders within uh, within the program, according to to their um, their transactions and also to their um, to their social network analysis. So we, we identify common patterns within the um, within the, the Banco Posta customer base in order to really understand uh, uh, similar spending behaviors and uh, build. Uh, um, direct mailing and in general uh, communication activities uh, really targeted one to one. Um, very briefly, this is an example of direct mailing uh, that Banco Posta um, that Banco Posta sends on a on a monthly basis to cardholders uh, with uh, um, with the geolocation features linked to these, so that the cardholder receives a direct mailing with uh, with um, point of sales. Very close to their uh, to their residence address uh, and very uh, let's say strongly linked to their spending behaviors, merchant by merchants and industry by industry. It's just an example, but just to give you the feeling of the of the power of, of data. Okay, so this is, these are the example of, of the all the marketing communication activities that we are doing uh, with a lot of direct marketing. Being a postal organization, obviously we are doing a lot of direct marketing. Uh, and uh, somehow also the, all the digital communication that we are doing and all the communication, the point of sales of the merchants. This is the number of the merchants that we recruited, 27,000. This is important because probably the first question is from, from your side, how can you recruit 27,000 merchants without being an acquirer? I mean, probably you have in this country also this player that are making voucher meal uh, business and they are usually going to the small merchants and recruiting them to accept these uh, vouchers and that's what we are doing. So we also outsourced the recruiting uh, business uh, toward this voucher meal uh, player uh, and this is more or less oh, sorry, the, um, the split that we did in terms of chains. Uh, the biggest uh, in terms of number of chains is essentially uh, the petrol and the uh, food business and then electronics um, and that's what we have done in terms of network. This is the, the result in terms of a cashback. We were able to give 32 million euro cashback to the customer. It's around 10 million euro cashback per year. Uh, the average discount is 5% um, and the, uh, so we have a very lucky customer who received 3,000 euro, which is obviously an exception, not the average, as you can imagine. Um, and this is the answer to the first question. So as you can see, we were able to decrease 50% the churn rate, that's the average churn rate that we had, 8%, and we decreased by 50% but till 4.3%. If you see the same number within the active customer outside Sconti Banco Bosta, which are probably a similar cluster, the, re the, the reduction is somehow, uh, the decrease is lower. It's only within brackets 30%. That's another important, uh, just without going to the single uh, item, I think that the most important number is that is the transaction volumes within the coalition is four times the transaction volumes outside the coalition. So if you compare the January, the six months in 2013, compared with the six months in, uh, in, in 2010, and you see the increase of the transaction out of, of the network, Estonti Banco Posta, and in the network, you see that the increase in the network that we, the 27,000 retailers is uh, four times the increase that we have seen outside the network. That's a very easy way to see to measure what we have done. If you see from the from the merchant perspective, we were able to 
to increase the share of wallet uh, twice versus the situation at the beginning of the program. At the beginning of the program we had 12% uh, share, now we have 26%, and these are real numbers. Uh, this was done with the uh, petrol, but we, we can measure all these di different performances with the different partners. As you can see, the increase is corresponding when we had the acceleration campaign, yeah? which in some, times, in some times it's a massive program, so it's addressing all the customer, in some times it's addressing all, only the customer using their cards in the competitors. So in, and that, that's, a, I think, one of the, the biggest uh, success and, and KPI that we had. Yep. And uh, just to complete the picture, I mean, we discussed it about partnership, uh, Banco Posta with, uh, with MasterCard, and uh, you see, I mean, how the, the program is, uh, is huge. And uh, right now we have, uh, as MasterCard advisor, I have a team, uh, basically resident in the Posta, working with, with Paolo and his team, uh, composed of uh, 10 to 12 FTEs, working on all the key dimension of a loyalty program. So, uh, working on, on marketing activities, so in uh, all the analytics, uh, um, all the analytics activities that you, you saw before, but we also, I mean, uh, work to um, to understand the potential of new of new merchants to enroll into the program, we prepare business case I and mean, uh, to to attract new merchants. We've got some people working um, I mean uh, from a technical perspective in the in the platform. Um, we work on the merchant operations. So we also take care of all the activities that are um, uh, related to to merchants after their um, onboarding into the coalition, and last but not least, all the communications activities together with um, with Banco Posta. So again, important because Post Italiana decided to outsource instead of um, build competencies internally. So this is um, this is uh, the case, and uh, in terms of key takeaways, uh, so it's important first of all, I mean to. Uh, to understand if you, from an initial perspective, want to start a program being alone or enter into a merchant coalition, what's important is the frequency of transactions that is really drives the success of, um, of a program. Then the reward we discussed, you saw in the metrics, it's important, uh, especially in, uh, in Europe and in Italy, to focus on cash. People, especially in this uh, crisis period, is more, more focused on cash versus, uh, versus point. Yeah, I would say, I mean, I mean, outsource. I mean, we are, we are really a big elephant. And to dance the elephant, I mean, you need the mouse. I mean, I don't want to consider MasterCard the mouse, but just, just to be honest, you really, you really need to, do, to think, to, to make things outside the, the big elephant. Otherwise, you won't be able to do this. We were able to implement this in six months, so it was very easy. And, uh, and the other thing is make as simple as possible. It's a bread and butter program. The customer is not enrolled has to use the card, and the merchant has to do nothing. Because if we only have to certify the boss, but we don't make any type of implementation on the merchant side. And we finish. Yeah, finishing, yeah, man. Think on the customer as usual, no? Thank you. Thank you.